afternoon now. I'm Ryan Phelan, and uh, my organization, Revive and Restore, uh, is mostly known for our work in the terrestrial world. And so I'm up here with my esteemed colleagues as incredible experts on the ocean. And I can say that I'm a real expert on asking important questions about the ocean. So uh, Revive and Restore last year was contacted by a new private family foundation. And they asked us a very simple question. They said, what can biotech bring to a more bioabundant ocean? Now, we work at the convergence of biotech and conservation. That's what we do. And we didn't have a lot of answers. And we said, well, we'll sign up. We want to do the work. And what we learned in a nutshell is that genomic technologies and synthetic biology, by and large, is highly underutilized by the conservation community, especially when it comes to the ocean. These are nascent technologies that are waiting for funders to start to help catalyze and to bring uh, new opportunities for scientists to actually engage in a, a solution set. Uh, just with coral, there's 650 reef building species of coral and less than a dozen have ever been fully sequenced. So we're losing biodiversity before we bank it and before we sequence it. We hired over a dozen researchers from all the branches of marine biology, and we interviewed esteemed colleagues like Jerry and Sylvia and a hundred other marine biologists from around the country, and we asked the same questions. And we said, are you using the tools that are out there of, from building up in this framework from banking and sequencing, are they being used in your field? By and large, no. This assumption is that technology is too expensive. But as we work our way up, the, the, the level of complexity uh, becomes deeper and more um, and requires more intervention with nature and becomes clearly more controversial when it comes to social license to do any kind of genome engineering or facilitated adaptation for species that can no longer survive in a warming ocean. Some of the ideas, advancing a new coral toolkit. This includes research for stem cell development. These are, this is a fundamental toolkit that researchers around the world need, whether you're on the Great Barrier Reef or you're in the Caribbean. We approach scientists from Australia that are dealing with the crown of thorns. There's over 14 million crown of thorns alone on the Great Barrier Reef predating on coral. There's got to be a genetic solution. We have scientists that are working on it. The marine protected areas that everybody agrees in conservation, we need more marine protected areas. We don't actually have a good way today to actually identify the best spots. But with the advent of genomics and next generation sequencing, we can do a much better job not only identifying areas for great uh, uh, marine protection, but also to demonstrate the value of these protected areas outside of their domain. Aquaculture has now outpaced farm fish in global consumption of food. It's right at the tipping point. But with aquaculture comes a really horrific thing that we should talk more about, which is it relies on forage fish that should be feeding the bigger fish of the ocean. Enter synthetic biology, which right now with groups like the Anthropocene Institute, the Good Food Institute, and a number of different nonprofits are pushing the development of cellular agriculture that could actually do twofold. It could remove some of these technologies, uh, could remove CO2 emissions. There are seafood alternatives coming on the market. I spoke with a company here in uh, the San Francisco area called Finless Foods. They're going to actually try to go after the very high-end sushi market, creating a replacement for bluefin tuna. Fast tracking forward, I think one of the things that Breakthrough is so great at really helping us all think about is what is the future that we want? It's really the culmination of all of these different technologies. It's not just genomics and synthetic biology. It's all the tools that conservation has to have. We have to protect, absolutely. We have to intervene. And I think the value of these new technologies that I'm trying to really help showcase with this report is that they can't go forward unless we actually start to demonstrate the success. How does it impact? wildlife disease, invasive species, overfishing. Once we have those success stories, we can really build the future that we want to all be part of. Thank you.